The Chakrabarti inquiry was an inquiry into anti-Semitism and other forms of racism in the British Labour Party in 2016. And the reason the inquiry was held by the party was because there had been a whole series of Labour Party members and activists, including quite senior people, who had uh, allegedly made anti-Semitic remarks and some of them had been suspended from the party and some had even been kicked out. And this reached ahead in uh, April 2016 when a Labour Member of Parliament, uh, Naz Shah, who's the MP for Bradford West, was revealed to have put various statements on uh, Facebook in 2014 at the time of the conflict uh, in Israel and Gaza, which many people considered to be anti-Semitic. One such statement was a map of Israel uh, superimposed onto the United States of America with a title saying, uh, proposed solution for the uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, relocate Israel to the United States. And she had endorsed this idea and made a joke about it on Facebook. And other comments as well. These emerged in 2016. And after two days of prevarication, the party uh, suspended her membership and launched uh, an investigation into her comments. Then, the very next day, Ken Livingstone, who is one of the best-known politicians in this country and a very senior figure in Labour Party politics for 30 years, went onto the BBC to defend Naz Shah and in so doing made some really quite outrageous comments about uh, Hitler and about Zionism. He said that Hitler was supporting Zionism in the 1930s and only after that he, in Livingston's words, went mad and ended up murdering six million Jews. And he also claimed, as Ken Livingston often claims, that there is some kind of conspiracy to use the smear of anti-Semitism as he sees it to silence criticism of Israel. Ken Livingstone was then also suspended from the party, and in order to really put a stop to this snowballing even more, uh, the party announced an inquiry, and it was going to be headed by Shami Chakrabarti, who had just recently resigned as the head of one of Britain's uh, leading human rights organisations. So that was the immediate cause. But really what had happened before then was that there had been a drip-drip effect of lots and lots of Labour Party people allegedly making anti-Semitic comments. And there was a whole question about anti-Semitism around the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn himself. The Labour Party has, long, has a long tradition of support from British Jews and has long upheld a lot of things that British Jews really care about, including support for Israel over many years. But in uh, 2015, Jeremy Corbyn became leader of the party and he comes from the hard left of British politics from an anti-Zionist left, from a left which is extremely hostile to Israel and to Zionism, which really does not have much connection to the Jewish community at all. And Jeremy Corbyn himself, uh, at the time that he was standing for leader, was accused of endorsing or sharing platforms with various unsavoury people, some of whom were accused of Holocaust denial, others of making various anti-Semitic comments. Corbyn himself was on video in 2010 making a speech in which he called Hamas and Hezbollah his friends and he described Hamas as a movement for social justice and political justice, which coming from someone on the left is language that really means a, an ideological connection. And Corbyn didn't answer these questions very well. In fact, he didn't really like being asked them. And so this whole question of anti-Semitism hung around the Labour Party. It came to a head in April 2016 uh, with the suspensions of Naz Shah and Ken Livingstone. It made anti-Semitism a national political story in Britain, a headline story for the first time in decades. And to try and get control of the story, the party launched the inquiry. Now, sad to say, it didn't work, partly because the content of the inquiry report didn't really go deep enough into the problem. It addressed some of the symptoms, it talks about some of the language that people shouldn't use, for example, it recommended that it was not a good thing for Labour Party members to compare Israel to Nazi Germany or to use the word Zio as an insult, which you think would be pretty obvious things for an anti-racist party. But it didn't really go into the question of why these things have become prevalent in parts of the left and whether it's connected to a really obsessive emotional hatred of Israel that exists in some parts of the left. The issue of anti-Semitism anti never went away. 
it was there were as a, there was a kind of continuous bubbling up of stories emerging some of them old some of them new some of them about the structures of the Labour Party failing to deal properly with, with anti-Semitism, some of them about things that Corbyn had said and done. And it bubbled up again and it kind of increased in, in, in uh, certainly the Jewish community became more worried because Corbyn became more powerful. There was a, a video emerged from Jeremy Corbyn when uh, Corbyn had been recorded really denouncing a couple of people who he called Zionists and he said the Zionists don't understand the the irony that the Palestinian ambassador was employing and he said they've lived in England all their life but they still don't seem to understand English irony and again it becomes then a matter of interpretation and Corbyn said this was just about language but many many people saw in that statement, a kind of othering of British Jews, of saying that British Jews live here, but they're not really of us. And uh, that was quite a big event. The Jewish community, having had a kind of remarkable degree of unity and consensus, uh, began to, to say that, that it's important for them that Labour adopts the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which is a framework, a set of guidelines to help Labour decide, understand what is anti-Semitic and what isn't. And of course, the anti-Zionist activists hate IRA because IRA is explicit <clears throat> that certain kinds of hostility to Israel should be understood to be possibly or potentially anti-Semitic. The formal adoption of IRA, I think, calmed everything down again a little bit in the, in the way of Chakrabarti. And in the time after that, in, in the autumn, the fall of uh, 2018, the Brexit issue came to the fore again and became, um, you know, a, a kind of really compelling <laughs> uh, discussion. I, it's now the very beginning of January 2019, and we have no idea what's going to happen. What frightens me in terms of anti-Semitism is this, that the events in the Labour Party have been creating, educating a cadre of activists to believe that the Zionists are their key enemy. The Zionists or the Jewish community stand between us and socialism, between us and our best chance in a generation to have uh, JC, Jeremy Corbyn in power. And on the right, the discourse also can be seen as a kind of conspiracy theory. We're being run by Europe, by the EU, by the foreigners, uh, the elite, the cosmopolitan elite, the citizens of nowhere, are bringing in immigrants to undercut labour. And this whole discourse about cosmopolitans and citizens of nowhere and the elite from the cities who are really in charge is itself not anti-Semitic, but it's very close to an anti-Semitic narrative. So, so there's a cadre on the left educating itself, its formative political experiences that the Jews stand between us and socialism. And there's a cadre on the right educating itself to believe that the will of the people is being betrayed by a globalist, anti-democratic, cosmopolitan, citizen of nowhere elite. And I think if there's a political and or economic crisis, then this pair of, of cadres of political people which have been created over the last few years might grow and get a hearing and become powerful and important. And I think either of them could develop into much more explicitly anti-Semitic movements. That's the danger I see.